Gentlemen's game here. Today, I'm gonna tell you a story about an amazing date I was on with someone who ended up being my girlfriend for a while. And maybe you'll start picking up a few ideas of things you can start doing on your own dates. So for the sake of the story, let's call her Marie. I actually first met Marie outside a park in downtown New York. I don't really remember what I first said to her to be honest. Probably something I noticed about her outfit. But I do remember her telling me she was on her way to dance class and then agreed to give me her number to hang out sometime. After a bit of texting, she agrees to come out with me two days later. I already thought she was cute, but she also seemed pretty down to earth and chill, so I really wanted the date to go well. So I want to first talk about the pre-work of the date, or the mindset that I went into the date with. Mindset is half the battle, and can make a huge difference between a great date and a bad one. I made sure to get into a playful, fun mood as much as possible. There's tricks you can do to get yourself into this state. For example, I do this by laughing at some memes right before the date. And this makes the date way more low pressure, relaxed, and fun. So anyways, she meets me by a Barnes & Nobles. I give her a hug, then I remember complimenting her hair. I think it's always a good idea to notice something about your date that catches your eye. It lets her know that you're paying attention and makes her feel appreciated. Then I tell her, follow me. I know there's a dope eating spot around here. It's pretty low-key, so not a lot of people know about it. And I just start walking, making small talk with her, asking how her day was. When you're on a date, you're supposed to tell her where to go, to make the decisions and lead her. It's sort of what women expect you to do as the guy. If you can't lead, it means you're unreliable, you're indecisive and can't get things done. And that is unattractive. Anyways, we get to the restaurant. It's a tiny space, probably less than 500 square feet, and can seat around 20 people. I made sure to order the same thing for us. Their signature fried chicken buns with sweet potato fries drizzled in their secret sauce. The reason I do this is because studies actually show that when you order and eat the same food with someone, you subconsciously build rapport and trust with that person faster. A professor found in her experiment that participants who ate the same foods together reached agreements twice as quickly and were more generous with their money compared to those who ate different foods. It's something that goes all the way back to our caveman days. We trust that our food will nourish us, so we're more likely to trust people who eat that same food. Anyways, back to the date. I wanted to take Marie to this restaurant in particular because of the layout. Because there weren't that many seats, we pretty much had to sit next to each other instead of across. This is another thing I think is helpful to know on dates. Always sit next to them if possible, instead of across. It's way more casual and more likely to lead to fun, playful interactions instead of having that weird interviewee kind of formal vibe. I ask her questions about herself that I'm genuinely curious about, like why she wanted to be a dancer, why she chose to study in New York, etc. Remember guys, it's as important to be interested than to be interesting, especially if you want to win her over. And also, whenever I make a joke or laugh, I'll lightly touch her shoulder or her elbow casually. This is also important. As a guy on a date, you have to be comfortable with knowing when and how to use physical touch. I know a lot of guys will listen to this and be scared that they're going to come across as creepy or pushy, but realize that human beings need physical touch in order to connect with someone. It's why we hug and kiss the people we love. So, you should use touch to get her more comfortable around you. Again, it all comes back to how casually you do it. If you're going to make touching her into this huge deal, then yeah, it's weird. But if you're just joking around, then casually touch her in a safe area like the arms and shoulders or knees if you're sitting down to emphasize a point then that's completely fine at the end of the day girls know why they're on a date they expect you to be a gentleman but they also expect you to have the balls to make a move if you're interested also i've noticed that the earlier i start doing this casual light-hearted touching the more likely the girl will start becoming flirtier later on after we finish eating i bring her to this huge park nearby it's actually one of the most famous in new york since the views of the city are so beautiful at night again i just real casually lead the date like hey i know this awesome park nearby it has the most beautiful views you'll love it and just start walking so, as a general rule, I like having at least two, preferably three different locations to stop at and hang out during a date. The reasons why this is so important in my opinion is perceived time. What this means is that the more different places you go with a person, the longer it'll feel like you've been with them. For example, let's say you spend 60 minutes in a restaurant with a friend versus 60 minutes hanging out at a restaurant, then going to a bar, then getting dessert. The second use of your 60 minutes is going to feel longer than the first one because you're experiencing more variety and it's the same principle on a date. 
If you can bring a girl from place A to place B to place C even all in one night, then she's gonna think, wow, this guy's taking me to so many places. This is exciting. I'm having so much fun. And the more spots you bring her to, the more you two will build trust. Again, it's like, hey, I'm gonna make sure you have a great time. You can trust me. I got you. So, we finally get to the park. I'm still doing everything I've been doing. Making her laugh, holding strong eye contact, leaning in slightly when I talk, being a bit flirty and playful with my touch. We're just slowly pacing around the park, taking in the sights. One thing to note is that even though we're making conversation, it doesn't feel forced at all. Do not think that one of you always has to be talking at all times. Silences aren't always bad. In fact, when done correctly, silences can create even more romantic tension between you two. So don't feel the need to talk just to fill the void of silence. Let her be the one to initiate conversation from time to time. At this point, Marie is opening up more to me about her childhood, her desire to be a professional dancer, her love of hip-hop and reggae music. I notice she's leaning in more when she's talking. When I start noticing these signs of interest, I pretty much know that it's time for me to start being a bit more direct. Basically, mid-conversation, I just completely stop talking, look at her and say, you know, you're actually really cute, then resume the conversation as if I never stopped. I like this because it completely caught her off guard. She was completely into the convo and didn't expect it, so she has this completely confused look of, wait, what did you just say? But I could see her smiling. This is when the friendly touching turns into some hand-holding, and 10 minutes later, some kissing. I have to emphasize how important it is to just go for it if you feel like she's interested in you. The key is to be able to vibe with her and be aware of how receptive she is to being kissed. Is she smiling or laughing a lot? Does she like being physically close to you? If yes, then make a move. At this point in the date, we were holding hands, laughing, and walking around like a couple. I eventually walk her back down her train station for her to get home, kiss her goodbye, and that's pretty much it. I like to end my dates on a high note, especially when I know she would have wanted to hang out longer. I find that it makes them want to see you even more. Looking back, it sounds a bit boring when you break down everything we did on the date, eat at a low-key restaurant, then walked around a nice park and took in the sunset. But that's the point I was trying to make. Dates don't have to be fancy and extravagant to lead somewhere. They just have to be fun. By the end of the date, I knew that she was really into me because I focused on the vibe and energy between us instead of stressing over taking her to some fancy restaurant or impressing her with my $2,000 watch. So, let's quickly recap. Number one, get into a fun and playful mindset before the date. This will make it way easier to be cool, calm, and charming. Number two, leading. So making sure you're handling the logistics of where to go and what to do so that she doesn't have to worry about anything and just have a great time. Remember, having multiple locations planned already will make the time spent with you that much more exciting. Number three, vibing with her. This is where stuff like eye contact, sitting next to her, and joking around become useful. The key is to be genuinely curious about what she's like. Number four, power of human touch. So casually using touch to connect with her more. Start with safe zones like the shoulder or arm. When you get the sense that she likes you, you can try hand holding or casually putting your arm around the small of her back. And finally, go for it. When you're starting to get the sense she's into you, go for it. Doesn't matter how, can be holding her hand, going for a kiss, telling her how attractive you find her. If you're not sure whether she's into you, check out my video on how to tell how into you a girl is. Obviously, if she's not smiling or laughing or making it obvious that she likes you, you should not go for a kiss. That's it for the video, and I hope you learned something. Next week, I have a banger of a video for you guys, so make sure to like and subscribe, and as always, peace.